Hey guys, I'm going to apologize for the sermon right to begin with because I didn't really think it out as carefully as I could and I didn't have all that time because every once in a while the old Holy Spirit jumps up and says, hey, why don't you do this? And then there's not enough time to prepare everything. So hopefully you'll still get the idea on this. You know that our Father God lives in heaven. Do you have, have your teachers taught you yet that he has the biggest, most gorgeous house in all of heaven. In fact, there's only one house in heaven. And God made a room in it for each and every one of us. Those of you that are sharing a room with your brother or sister, when you get to heaven, you get your own room. Oh, it's really good there. So it's, it's like this great, great, great house. But I was thinking, you know, God lives on earth here with us too. God's present everywhere. And I was thinking, boy, I wonder what kind of a house God should have on heaven. Do you think he should have a little rundown shack somewhere on the other side of the tracks? You think God should have a, a little shanty? I don't think. Do you think he should have a big, 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 nice house? I mean, I, my God deserves it. You know, I got a picture and afterwards, I was thinking I could have found a picture of the temple in its glory, but it wouldn't have been a, ph a photograph. So, yak, yak, yak. I decided I'd go with the Taj Mahal. Now, this is one of the seven wonders of the world. It's supposed to be the most beautiful place in the whole world. Now, that would be a place fit for God to live in, don't you think? That, 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 you know what? No, you know what? He actually, it's, it, do you think it's too small for him? Or is it, you're right. Because, would you come up here for a minute? Can, I'm, I won't hurt you. You can trust me. Because, see, see this right here? This is where God lives. Right here. What a beautiful temple, huh? And, and right here, this is where God lives. It's having a little structural damage. The, uh, the sub... <laughs> The supports running up the sides are starting to bow a little, but it's, it's still, God still lives in here. And guess what? He lives in a beautiful little blonde-haired girl with a beautiful red dress on and a beautiful little blonde-haired girl with pink on. And every one of you guys that's up here, even you scruffy-looking real guys, <laughs> guess what? God lives inside of each and every one of you too. Thank you so much for helping me, buddy. Jesus said to the woman at the well, I tell you the truth, one day you won't have to go to a temple to pray. You'll be able to worship God in spirit and in truth wherever you are. And that's because God, when you accept Jesus, God actually comes and lives in you as the Holy Spirit. And you know what? I think if you have God living in you, that it's up to you to try keep your house as clean as possible. You know what I mean? Not too many bad things. When you all grow up and get to college and everybody's having parties, you say, no, I'm sorry. I can't go to that party. God lives in me. And I'm sure you'll be totally accepted. <laughs> anyway, kids, I want you to know God's living inside of you. And the nice part of it is he will actually help you do all the good things you want. You just have to go and ask him. Jesus says he's with you anywhere you go, okay? Would you please pray with me? My goodness, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Heavenly Father. Oh, that's when you say Heavenly Father now. Heavenly Father. Good deal. Thank you for living in me. Help me to be the best house I can be. I thank you for all you do for me. In your most holy name we pray. Amen.